Today we're going to look at the procedure for projection painting in Blender 272. And the reason I'm making this video is partly because I've not made one on projection painting before, but also it because the procedure has changed a good deal in the last couple of iterations of Blender. So let's go through it. In many ways it's actually simpler than the previous procedure, but it is also very different. And there isn't a great deal of reference about this on the web as yet. So I've got a 3D head here. If I select it and go into edit mode, we can see it's reasonably low poly. It's got good edge loops, good topology, and also these red highlighted edges indicate that it's already been seamed. It's ready for UV unwrapping. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to shaded mode for the moment. I've hidden my camera, the ground plane, the camera target, and the light. And first of all, I'm going to split the screen and make the left-hand side, doesn't have to be the left-hand side, it could be the other one, a UV image editor. Okay, and what I'm going to do is to apply a default grid image to this head, UV map it, and we're going to use that as the basis for our projection painting. So starting off, I need to create an image, a new image. I'm going to call this base. Names are important, as you'll see in a moment. And the color, I don't care about because I'm going to use the plain black and white UV grid that's inbuilt into Blender. OK, there we go. That looks good. Right, let's go over to the right hand side, tab into edit mode, but before I do that I'm going to hide the eyes because those are kind of creepy if we're looking at them all the time in the edit mode, and go to wireframe, here's our wireframe, A to select all, U, and I'll just choose unwrap, and I can choose the default unwrap because we've got these seams already splitting it up into good islands for UV mapping over here. Our grid has disappeared. To get it back, we simply click on the icon base. There it is with the UV unwrapping. And we have the, the scalp with the holes for not the eyes, but the ears, in fact. We have, let's hold down Control and hit Tab, go to Island Selection, move these four small islands up to the top. And those are, in fact, the insides of the nostrils. Let's look at this in wireframe mode. So we can see the edge loops inside the nostrils. And the reason for that is that these faces would get extremely distorted, be quite confusing if they weren't split off from the rest. You can see there's also an edge loop around the mouth separating off the inside of the mouth, and there are edge loops around both the inside of the ears, the ear canal as it were, and the outside of the ears. So let's go back here, and I want to move the ears. These ears I don't want to make quite so small. I'm going to move them up here, scale them up, because the ears are part of what's seen, so we want a fairly detailed map on those. Let's change this to shaded mode and see here how, as we make the islands for the ears bigger, the actual squares of the texture get smaller, more detailed. This is the inside of the mouth. I can probably take that down and move it out of the way. Don't worry too much about that. And this is the face. We'll go over here and look at the face. I want to rotate it so it's approximately level, doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to move it up to this point, and then I'm going to scale it much as I can without overlapping any other island. So we've got a reasonably detailed UV mapping for the face. All right, that's good. That's our base image, and that's also our base UV map. We've got an asterisk next to the word image. I've got to save this if I want to keep any amendments. Well, I'm not going to save it as an external file. In fact, I'm going to pack it as a ping inside our Blender file. Very good. Asterisk has disappeared. Let's go over here, and I'm going to hit F12 to render this, uh, this head. And after a moment it appears, and of course it appears without the UV grid. 
Why does it appear without the UV grid? Because if we go over to the properties panel here, we've got a default material, but we don't have any texture ready. So I'm going to make a new texture. I'm going to call that once again base. It's an image or movie, it comes in by default. And I'm going to go down here, select the image. I'm not going to open it because I didn't save it externally. I'm going to click on this pop-up, choose it from the list, base. And just scrolling on down here, make sure mapping UV coordinates, that's good. And the influence is just going to be color, and that's fine as well. So now if I render, it comes in with the appropriate texture and UV mapping. Now I want to look at the object data for this particular mesh. Object data is the three vertices connected by edges over here. I'm not interested in the texture space, the vertex groups, the shape keys. What I'm interested in is the UV maps. And we've got a UV map, which is the one that we just created, and it's called base. Now, before I do anything else, I want to make a new UV map. Plus, I'm going to call it front. And now I'm going to go to a front orthogonal view. It's gone off the screen. I hit home to get it back into the middle of the screen. I open up my front image in the UV editor. Image, open image. Uh, that's probably it, but let's just be sure. Let's check on the rightmost of these three icons to get a preview. There it is, front ping. Open image. And this image has been digitally altered so that it's removed the distortion caused by the camera. So this guy's features look a little bit too small for his head. That's because the perspective effect of the camera has been removed, probably in Photoshop or GIMP. And it means that I can use an orthogonal view over here for mapping. If this was a regular camera shot with the distortion, including a larger nose of a short focal length, like a 25mm or a 35mm lens, then I would need to go over here and have a perspective view. And I would need to make sure that that perspective view was matching the perspective of the camera. So if it was a 35mm lens, I would need to make sure that the preview was also 35mm over here. If it was a 25, I would make it 25. But as it is, we've got uh, an admittedly artificial, but still an orthogonal view, a view that kind of looks like he pressed his face to a scanner. So I can hit 5 over in the 3D window, and I've got an orthogonal view. I can hit A, you project from view. And now I get a front view of the mesh. Front view and back view of the mesh. Let's bring in the file again. A to deselect. Holding down control and clicking tab. I'm going to make sure I'm in island mode. Right click. S, X. Scale it on the X axis. G, Y. Remember, this is 2D, so it's X and Y. Y is moving in this direction. S, Y. I'm going to scale it up. And I can preview this in the right-hand window. Now, it may be that you can't see in textured or in solid mode. You may need to bring in the right-hand fly-in and go to the shading rollout and choose maybe multi-texture will work for you. Maybe you have to switch off textured solid and go to texture mode. One of these will probably work for you. GLSL and solid mode and textured solid generally works for me on this particular machine. It's a function of the graphic card that you have in it. Okay, A to deselect over here. Again, control tab, pull up the UV select. I'm going to go to vertex and select two of these vertices by the eyes because you can see the eyes in the UV map don't quite match the eyes in the mesh. So I need to move those. I need to move those with the surrounding vertices. So scrolling my mouse wheel down here, I'm going to go to enable proportional editing, 
G and increase the influence by scrolling the mouse wheel slightly move it around okay so now the eyes in the UV map match the eyes in the mesh let's A to deselect select the nostrils you can see the nostrils here don't match the nostrils in the UV mesh down there so what do I need to select I probably need to select these two G move those up and it's never going to be perfect but that's certainly a lot better and you'll notice we're introducing some distortion in the face already what I could do alternatively is I could alter the mesh to match the photograph that's a different procedure I'm not going to show it today but it's something to keep in mind it is an alternative so I'm going to select the vertices along the mouth because the mouth does not match the uh, the mouth in the UV does not match the mouth in the mesh again G and move it so that it matches reasonably well and what else his hairline is a little high I'm going to A to deselect C select a vertex up there G and then this time I'm going to increase the selection a good deal so that I just move the top of the head up to the point where the hairline in the mesh is matching more or less the hairline in the image okay very good so that's our front mapping and interesting you'll see that we've got this guy's face reasonably well mapped on the front of the mesh but it's also mapped on the back of the mesh so that might be a problem but in fact it's not because we have a photograph of him from the back and we're going to use that to paint over all these faces so we'll go back to looking at him from more or less the front view and go back also to our UV maps but before we do that before I do anything more I'm just going to make sure that I have this front ping file also packed as an image in the blender file all right so now I want to add another UV map and this UV map is going to be side now I can go to side view right ortho view I want to open up another image open image in fact is it going to be side R or side L if we look at the previews in fact side L is the one that matches our right view so there we go again you project from view a G to move and you can see his ear moving about I'm gonna scale it s for scale G move it over and the important thing here is the ear I want to make sure that the ear is pretty well pretty well aligned with the mesh the eyes and the mouth not so much the reason why these aren't important is that these particular faces are going to be projection painted from the front so how accurate they are in the side view doesn't actually matter so this looks pretty good and we have him painted from both sides you'll notice he's got a white stripe down the middle of his face and that's because part of his face is being mapped to the white edge of the image here along his nose for example it's gonna be white in the middle so he's got a white stripe down his nose doesn't matter because all these faces are going to be mapped from the front image okay image pack image last one again I'm going to go to front view and I'm going to add a back I'm gonna open image where is it back open image you project from view and you'll realize this is of course exactly the same as a project from view of the front but this time we're using it with the back image this one G to move s to scale G again and because it's really just going to be used for the middle of the head the back of the neck that's about as good as I need to make it and again I'm going to pack this image 
so that if I happen to send this to somebody, they can still do the work. And he's got hair right down his face, as well as down the back of his head in this case. And he's got some white stripes on his side. Those are going to be painted by the side images. Doesn't matter. All right, so at this point, if I go to Object, Object Mode, and I go to Base, I should see the base map properly mapped, or the base image properly UV mapped. Here's the front. Here's the front mapped right the way through the mesh. Here's the side, again mapped right the way through the mesh from the side. And here's the back mapped right the way through the mesh from the back. So now I can start to put these together. And the way I do this is not as before in the UV editor, but by using, sensibly enough in fact, texture mode. So let's open up an image back here. I'm going to open up our base image because we're going to be painting on this. And as we paint, you can see the changes happening in real time, almost, on this image to the left. Okay, I want to go from object mode to texture paint. Okay, why is the UV map smeared through like this? Because we have the back UV map enabled. So that's the reason we have this image smeared through. Important now, bring in the left hand fly in. I'm going to reduce the size here slightly. And first of all, go to slots. Slots is a relatively new tab in texture paint. We'll start there. Painting mode. What do I want to paint with? We've got the choice of material or image. Well, we want to paint with an image, so let's choose that. And immediately, the head turns purple. It turns purple, this very distinctive color, because that's the color things turn when they don't have a texture properly applied to them. The color, the warning color, is defined down here at the foot of the texture tab. You can actually change it if you want, but this is sufficiently obnoxious that it's uh, pretty good as a default. So I need to tell it what to paint. We've already said UV map back. That works. Actually, it doesn't. We want the base. And the canvas, I want to make the base again. I could, at this point, make a new image if I wanted to, but I'm just going to use the base image. So in the Slots tab, Painting Mode is Image, Canvas Image is Base, UV Map is also Base. And we have to, at each point, make sure that the image matches the UV Map. And that's all we need to do in the Slots tab. Let's go back up to Tools. Brush. Okay, the brush needs to be cloned. We've got a lot of options. If it's not the default clone, then we need to choose that. And we also need to enable clone from image UV map. In other words, we're going to be painting on this base image a clone of the image as it would appear with that UV map. OK, source clone image. Where shall we start? Well, let's start with the front. I'll move over here. Source clone image, front. Source clone UV map, also front. So front ping, front UV map. And down here we've got the radius of our brush. It's pretty big, but we'll use that. Strength is 1, completely opaque. And now I can start to magically paint this character's face on the front faces of the mesh. And I can use the middle mouse button to move around. I'm going to move his head up slightly, continue painting. And you'll notice that the texture is actually a bit smeared down here because the angle of the photograph is quite a glancing angle to the underside of his chin. If we were doing this properly, we'd probably want to have a photograph from under his chin and also probably one towards the top of his head, down on the top of his head. We don't have that luxury, so we've got to work with what we have. As we move around, there are going to be some artifacts. We can sometimes help that by reducing the size of our brush, but every so often these artifacts will appear. It's almost unavoidable in my experience, and they can be cleaned up in an image editor. 
like Photoshop or like GIMP or even Blender's own default UV image editor. Okay, we've done the front. That looks pretty good to me. However, if I continue on along the sides and I continue painting the front image, you'll see that we get a lot of distortion. We got streaking because we're trying to paint the front image at a glancing angle along the sides. So now I need to change both the image from front to side and the UV map from front to side. And now I can start to paint the side of this character's head. And you'll notice I just touched one of the faces there. I'm going to need to correct that. So easier, in fact, if I go to a complete side view and I have a fairly good idea of where I am, I'm going to take it right up the top of his head. I'm going to paint behind his ear, F, click to reduce or to change the size of the brush, paint inside his ear. And you notice he's got a real 3D ear and behind it he's got a painted ear. So we're going to have to change that later on and we can do that again, as I say, in an image editor. And we'll just catch the top of his ear while we're here. Okay, very good. Let's look at the other side. There used to be an option for symmetrical UV image painting, projection painting. Unfortunately, that's disappeared. Hopefully, it'll reappear in the near future. But on the whole, I have to say that I find this new way of UV mapping is actually a lot better, a lot more intuitive than the old way though it's obviously it's going to be confusing at first to those of you who've done it before. All right, so these faces, these are more of the side than the top, I think. These faces are more of the front than the side. So I'm going to jump back to front ping and front UV map just to fill those in, correct this glitch on his forehead, move around, correct that glitch, fill in his hair. And again, you'll notice that We've got smearing from the front mapping and from the side mapping. Nothing we can do about that really unless we A, want to take a photograph of the top of his head or B, correct it in, uh, correct it in, the, in, a, in an image editor. Catch the top of his ear and move back until it starts to look fairly distorted. Uh, that's probably a good place to stop and now go to the last one, our back UV map and our back ping file and just fill in the back of his head using that particular image. So you can have pretty much any number of UV maps in this process. I certainly don't recommend using any less than three or four. I don't recommend unless you have a lot of time using more than nine or ten. Let's go to a side view here. Just fill in the top of his ear. Okay, that's good. That's good. And now I think we're done with our mapping. Obviously we could tidy it up. We can do that later. I'm going to close this. Close the left hand fly with the T key. I'm going to go back to object mode and expand the UV image editor side and you can see what we've got. We've got, well obviously we can see we've definitely got something that needs to be corrected, but basically we have these images smeared over the surface of the UV map. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, very good. We've got a star in his ear, we've got um, a few things that need to be changed, but on the whole this is pretty good. and. I want to make sure I pack it as a ping. I also, if I want to do some UV editing, might want to save as image so that I can open it from the disk and edit it in Photoshop and then save it again and pull it into the file. So here's our base. We've got a preview. It's being UV mapped. It's being UV mapped using the base. So at this point, we could actually delete these UV maps. I think it's probably a good idea to keep them uh, until we're absolutely sure we're finished. But now they can proceed to 
adjust this, we can color correct it, we can refine the boundaries between these, we can add some texture to the top of the head here to make it less distorted, and also correct things like this. So that's it, let's make this full screen, our UV mapped character head.